It's frustrating, isn't it? When your photography seems to lack any sort of creativity and it just is dull and it's lifeless and, and feels uninspired and you don't know how to fix it. Once upon a time, I let the technical aspects of my own photography consume me to the point where I was hamstrung and could not connect with my creativity. And I'm gonna share with you how I found out that becoming a, for want of a better word, a lazy photographer reconnected me with my creativity. How's it, how's it? Today, the modern photographer is has at their disposal a plethora of tools. And these are great, but they can overwhelm us and they can create confusion when it comes to the picture making process. Now it's well known that here on this channel, I'm, I'm not a big fan of, of gear reviews. And if you have a complete aversion to seeing any cameras on your screen, then I would suggest you, you look away now because I'm gonna show you the camera that I first started with. This is, this is a Spider-Man camera. It's uh, zero megapixels. Uh, it takes, I think it takes 126 film, something like that. It's a fixed focus lens. It has a, a wind on and a shutter and that's, that's kind of it. That's the camera that I was introduced to the joy of making pictures with. Now, obviously, as I got slightly older, I became more interested in my dad's camera, the little Canon A1, and, and the idea of you know, exposures and f-stops and all these sort of things were, were intriguing to me. And it got to the point where all that joy, that creativity of just taking photographs had been pushed to one side. And I became obsessed with getting things right, with getting the exposure right, with getting the right lens choice and all those sort of things that I'm sure we, we are familiar with that, that hamper us and hold us back. By not worrying about the lens choices or the exposures, you can allow yourself to be curious about the world around you. I'm reminded there's, a, there's an old quote that I, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna misquote, but it says something about like, you want to see the world through the eyes of a child. You want to react to it like a child would. I can't remember the, the photographer's name and I have tried to, to look it up and, and it escapes me. So if you do know, please let me know in the comments. Photography, like any other art form, has multi-disciplines within it. You know, there's a technique side of things. There's the, there's the aesthetic, the creative side of things. There's the, the post-processing side of things. All of these things are important. And please don't make, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that technical aspects are important. You should focus on them, but it's very difficult, especially as a beginner, to focus on all of these aspects at the same time. And this today is about focusing on the creativity side of things. So we're going to push the technical to one side. And we can do this even if you have digital camera by setting your camera on P. We're going to let the camera do the heavy lifting today. Just set it on P, put on a prime lens. If you don't have a prime lens, set your zoom or whatever to one focal length only right? And then that little annoying screen at the back, the little chimpy one that we keep looking at and checking if things are right, you're going to tape that up. It's scary, I know, <laughs> especially if you've never photographed without seeing the results instantly. Tape it up. Don't worry. We're not worried about what we see straight away and fixing it. We're just wanting to learn how to use our eyes, the best tool that we have. Back in the early 2000s, I was talking to a photographer in America. She was showing me some photographs that just excited me. They were, they were, they were wobbly and, and they had light leaks all over them and sort of scratches and the focus was all over the place and the exposures were kind of just, well, they were just average. And, but I was, in, I was transfixed with them. I, I loved them. I loved the vibe about them. This Victorian sort of feel. And she told me that they were made using a Holger. And at the time I hadn't heard of Holger and the toy camera movement was a little way off still, but I went, oh, you know, I'll, I'll get one of these. She said, it doesn't have any focus exposures or anything like that to really speak of. It just puts some film in and each one's slightly different. So I went off and I got myself Holger and I, and I walked the streets of Edinburgh and I was, it was like a weight was lifted from my shoulder. I was no longer worried about whether my exposures were correct or if my focus was was right because it was it was a zonal focusing sort of thing. I was simply in the process of taking photographs. And of course, because it was on film, I didn't know the results until I went and had the, the film process and I, and I got them back. And I was like, wow, these, these are amazing. This is what I want you to find out today is to reconnect with this, this joyousness of, of taking photographs and, and to developing your creativity again.
If you need to get in closer, then walk. If you need to get further back, then walk. The best zoom you have are your feet. Use them. You're going to find that taking all that stuff out of your, your, your bag, A, makes your bag a lot lighter. But it is going to liberate. I know I keep saying the word liberate, but it's going to liberate. It's going to make you feel more creative because you're forced to rely on yourself, not some magic piece of kit that's in your bag that somehow is going to fix the moment. Using that one lens is also going to teach you to see the world in a way that these lenses see it. So if you use a 50 mil constantly, you're going to start seeing the world as a 50 mil. If you use a 35 mil, the same again. It's so liberating when you can start seeing the world through lens frames. And, and, and it's all of a sudden, it just pops into your head one day. And, but it only comes if you work at it, if you nurture and develop this skill. And these are what these, are what these techniques are about, is about opening up this creativity. Throughout all of these exercises, you're going to feel like you should be paying more attention to your exposures, to the technical side of things. And, and I want you to fight that, that urge. This, this exercise is not about improving your technical aspect. That will come. And there are many exercises you can do to improve your technical ability so it becomes second nature and allows you to focus more on, on, the, on the creativity thing. So they do go hand in hand, but today it's about that very delicate thing creativity and that's what you're going to be able to tease out of of the scenes around you is this this creativity it is inside you but it's a lot more delicate than a technical aspect it's a lot more unique it's a lot more personal it's a lot more about you and your own vision you can do this i know you can you're going to be fantastic the more that you work on these skills, the more that you are going to be able to sense that there's an image hiding in something that you see, that somewhere in that mass of light and shadow and shape and form in front of you, there's a nugget of inspiration. I want you to just sit and let it come to you to reveal itself. And in time, you're going to learn to be a skilled seeker of these things. You're going to find it easier to tease out these little images from the potential that's all around you. There are so many examples of photographers who have been forced, I say use the word forced, it's a bit strong, but they have chosen to restrict themselves to either a single lens or a type of film stock or what have you. Anton Corbein is a fantastic example. Back in his early days, he only used the fastest film available to him because he had to photograph in a wide range of, 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 of places, you know, daylight and, and dark clubs or what have you. So he needed the fastest film because you could only afford one film stock so it forced him to be creative with what he did and it gave his images a look and a feel that has stayed with him to this day. If you're interested in learning about Anton Rubain and other photographers who you can gain a, a huge amount from from looking at their work I'll put a playlist of great photographers up on the screen for you at the end of the video and I suggest you go and have a look and maybe discover some people who you may not have heard of. I've talked a couple of times now about this idea of freedom, about how when we're not worrying about what the camera is doing or what the lens is doing or, or any of the other options that are available to us as a photographer, that we are, are liberated to concentrate on the, the image itself. A great example of this once was I was doing a wedding for a very dear friend of mine in London at one of these kind of pop-up restaurants. So the whole place was blacked out and, and lit in the same fashion. So everywhere throughout the, the, the venue, the exposure was the same. So I could just take one base exposure and it was going to be the same for the entire night. Also, because it was dark, I needed to have the fastest lens available to me, which at the time was a 1.8 50 mil. So I put that on and that was what I worked with the whole night. I had a 50 mil, I had the same exposure. And I believe that some of those wedding photographs from that day are the most vibrant and, and emotional that I took because I wasn't worried about doing gymnastics with my exposures, using different focal lengths to, to create mood and vibe and what have you. It was simply about being in the moment, using my ears, using my eyes to react to creating photographs using this rather than the camera. Obviously I was using the camera, but you know what I mean? It's, it's not having to worry about changing lenses, doing all that sort of stuff. It's about being 
in the moment, about seeing what's in front of you and teasing out the opportunities that are abundant in the things that we see. If we give them time to come up and we can do that when we're not spending time fussing about lenses, you can feel free to sit and just let a moment emerge. Henri Cartier-Bresson obviously talked about the decisive moment, just seeing a scene and waiting for that little element to occur, that element that would elevate the picture. If you're constantly thinking about exposures and about lenses, you might miss that moment. I want you to be comfortable with the idea of limiting yourself to a single focal length, of limiting yourself to exposures that aren't necessarily right and about being in that moment with the photograph. Take the leap to going into the unknown and seeing what comes out the other side. Don't be disheartened by the results. Use them and say, wow, this is, this is exciting. Learn to, learn to throw off those shackles and just embrace chaos. You know, embrace the chaos and let it, maybe, like Bob Ross once said, you know, show you happy little accidents. You never know until you try. As I mentioned earlier, here's that playlist of great photographers. Go on there, have a little look, see. There's some fantastic people on there who may also inspire you and, and give you ideas about your own creativity. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again soon.